So this is our new, more modern look and feel. We have very responsive and very, very quick setups and the, the navigation is has been improved a lot. We have, this is like a complete transformation from our previous version six to this new version 6.5. It's a fully developed cloud solution. So you don't have to worry about installation of software and management of local software. All of the work order or workflows are all automated within the software and it's fully compliant with 21 CFR part 11 for electronic signatures and for your time and date stamped on trail. So the key behind the software is that you're always ready for an audit. The um, grids are all Excel based type um, grids. So they're easy to use and um, you don't have to really learn a new filtering platform, something you'll already be used to. So just by using a small part of what you're looking for, you can find instruments or different areas very, very quickly. And all of the grids are exportable to Excel and the columns that appear, the order in which they appear, are also configurable for every user using our column selections. So you can select different columns and then move them around and then save that selection. You can change the width so it's very flexible. From the work screen, we can either issue or directly enter a work order for calibration, inspection or maintenance. And from here, we can view history just by having a simple Right click, you can see all of the different work orders at a high level, and then you can go into more detail and actually generate certificates as well. So this is very helpful for technicians if they wanna see historical data before they do something that they may not have worked on in a long time or something that is a bit of a tricky calibration to complete. From the work screen and depending on the user's privilege, we can go straight into the routine setup and look at different details about the routine. A routine is actually set up during uh, data import and it can be set up manually afterwards. So it's something that can be used over and over again. Typically you would have different templates for different parameters and types of calibration and then you would select them and the defaults from that actual template will be inherited into the routine, reducing the complexity and time to set up. We can see the values in the actual routine as well. We can have multiple outputs, a lot of different settings in the actual uh, results. In this case, it's just a very simple pressure in, pressure out calibration. We can also look at historical trending, another example of the reporting that we do in the software. So this graph displays the worst error from each calibration plotted against the lower and upper tolerance levels. And in this case, an adjust level, which is an optional tolerance. So from this screen, again, just to reduce the, the workflow and make things go a little bit quicker, we can actually issue or enter work orders directly from the setup, from the work screen, from the issue of bulk, unplanned work request. So no matter where you are, you have access to work on the calibrations. In this case, I'm just gonna go straight into the entry of a work order. And a work order can be a values related work order, which is a calibration, or it can be a simple inspection or maintenance. And even when you don't have values, you can still associate reference standards. So it's one of the new things in version six. So the workflow and the work order entry is very, very simple. You just have to fill out a few mandatory fields. The 
actual reference that you're using and this allows us to do a lot of uh, reporting around failed references so we have a report that we're going to see later on where we can look at all of the calibrations done using a reference and all of the details of the reference is actually associated to the work order, the current serial number, the certificate number, due date, it's all fully automated within the software. And basically what this means, it's all about audit, it's all about re being ready for an audit. So now we're into the values. We have in this case two different levels of tolerance. One is the optional, which we call adjust in this case, and all of the titles can be changed. And then we have what we are calling a tolerance level. And this is the actual failure limit. So if I put in a value just above the adjust level, it'll turn amber or orange. And then if I put a value just above the failure limit, it'll stay red. <clears throat> so I have a choice here now. I can either partially enter this work order, in other words, save it in the current state that it's in, do a further investigation, maybe talk to my super value or from a service company, my uh, manager or customer. In this case, we're going to do an adjustment and then we're going to do a full save and that will allow us to look at the deviation. So I'm going to put a value in that's below the threshold for the adjust level and also that's below the failure limit. So in this case, I have no red values in my as left. Uh, but just to get a better view of how successful my adjustment was, we can give a graph. So this graph plots the as found and as left against each other. And as you can see, the adjustment was not very far, which would indicate that this actual instrument should either be further investigated for possible repair or even replacement. So in a three-point calibration that we're looking at here, it's very simple, but you could have any number of calibration points and trying to look at the success of your adjustment is very difficult in that scenario. So this is very helpful to help you with um, improvements in efficiencies and not putting damaged instruments back into process. So now I'm going to fully save the work order. It sees it's critical, it generates a deviation. All of the information related to the failure or deviation is automatically inserted into the description field and cannot be edited. All fields are mandatory and need to be completed by the technician. So now I select save and in the background, the software will send an email to the responsible people against the instrument company that our site that that instrument is set up against and in the case of the instrument that we just calibrated the actual responsible person is uh is me so i'm just having a look on my other screen here and i can just pull up the example of the actual email that's sent so all of the details of the deviation are inserted in the email automatically. So as a technician, I don't need to worry about notifying anybody. The system will automatically do that for you. So nothing will get missed. The corrective action and the results of those actions, who cleared it and the cleared date will also need to be recorded in the software. Again, this is always ready for an audit and it's a key design feature of the whole software. So now we are going to look at the reports and KPIs. So from a basic workflow point of view, the instrument is set up and you enter the details of the inspection, maintenance or calibration. You can have multiple routines against the uh, item. So we can see here we have issue in bulk for doing multiple issuing together. And this is actually quite a cool screen because you can select all of the items that are in the, the filter list 
or just select a small few of the items, issue them to specific users so it's good for planning. Stuff like that we can do unplanned on outside like a regular scheduled. Work request is uh, something that where you can request any work to be done at all. It doesn't need to be a routine. So in the reports we have our our KPIs, the KPIs are generated on the fly and the KPIs that appear for each user and the order in which they appear like the grid columns are determined by either privilege settings or at the user level. So you can have technicians seeing specific KPIs, maybe a supervisor seeing another one and a quality seeing a different one. So in the reports, we have the general reports that we were talking about earlier on. And in this case, I'm just going to look over a long period of time for a specific actual reference. And what the report will find is all of the calibrations done using that reference standard. So full reverse traceability. <clears throat> Without a system like CompuCal, you'd literally never be able to do this kind of reporting. You can do it within seconds in the software. And as you can see here, the certificate number actually changed. So all of your reference standards and your normal instruments or plant equipment can be managed within the software. We have many different types of filtering that we can apply and also we have the other customizable reports. So in the case of the custom Excel reports, it's a fairly simple um, select and reorder. And then it generates a customizable Excel export report. So I can save this as a different file name and generate my own report. And all of this comes as standard with the standard software. The SQL report is uh, the next level of customizability where you can put different formulas and, um, and statistic analysis in a very comprehensive script. So it's a little bit more detailed than the custom Excel report, but you get a lot more flexibility. Then we have the email notifications. So as you set up your customizable reports, you can then set up email notifications. So if we look at this one as an example, the monthly due is sent to me and this guy, Fred, who's based in Indiana. And you can also put in an um, external email. So it could be your customer or maybe even you could be sending reports out to your subcontractors. So this email notification has the routines due in the future. It's sent out on the first day of every month. Uh, so you can have any level of reporting, any level of email automation. So then we have the audit trail. The audit trail is a record of all of the different edits and work orders and things that are done within the software. It's what makes the software compliant with 21 CFR Part 11, normally referred to as a time and date stamped audit trail. It also shows the old and the new values. So you can do very, very fast reviews of the software. If there's ever an issue that you can't resolve, you can do it within seconds or minutes in the audit trail. And again, this is exportable to Excel, but it cannot be edited. Again, it's a key audit feature. Then we have our interval analysis. And the interval analysis is basically a, an optimization tool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a sample. I'm just pulling up one there now. So this is an example of an export from the interval analysis. So we set a period of time. We set the type of instrument that we want to review. We set what we call a safety factor, which is the number of years. And then we set the interval. 
And what the safety factor means is if something is never calibrated and in the number of years, in this case, for the safety factor, the instrument will not reach its tolerance level, so it won't drift out to meet its tolerance level until eight years plus. We will then put that on the report with the recommendation of a, an increase to, let's say, two. So you get your master report, then you get a detailed report. And again, this is all about, you know, when you're going to your quality people without stuff like this, you're going to be very in a very difficult place trying to convince quality and validation to increase the intervals of especially quality instruments. So it's something that's automated, gives you a lot of information. All these reports can be printed out and then stored for future audits. So that's basically the end of my presentation. We also have a mobile application and there's a lot more features uh, from a low level point of view. If somebody wants to have a, a more detailed follow up, we could also accommodate that. I'm just going to look and see, have we any questions in our chat window? So. Does the system have an alert management system? Yes, that's the email uh, alerts that we just looked at in the report section. So where we can do the customizable reports and then attach them to a regular notification email. And there's another question here. How is the licensing? So the licensing is based on concurrent users. That's the number of people that can be logged in at any one time. So we have another question there. When can this version be rolled out to existing users? We anticipate towards the end of the year. We don't have an actual delivery date, but we will be notifying um, existing customers and new customers waiting for the version in plenty of time for the live rollout. So just one final question um, in about question about paperless. Uh, yes, obviously in the in this day and age in technology we can provide paperless solutions to to all of our users. The technology is um, something that allows that to happen. So it's actually a recommendation that we make to our customers. So if there's no other um, questions, um, we can wrap up the, the webinar and let everybody get back to their real jobs. Thanks for your time and we'll send you out the recording. Okay, goodbye.